Welcome to Design Stand Up, episode 35, The Seven Stages of the Design Craft and How to Get to the Next One, by Fabricio Teixeira of UX Collective. And I'm your host, Ryan Stone, reading to you every Tuesday and Thursday from the best blogs in the design industry, with their permission, of course. It's kind of like a free ongoing audiobook, always being updated with new content from your favorite designers. Whether you are a seasoned design professional or simply a design enthusiast, I am on a mission to help grow your knowledge in all things digital design. In today's post, Fabricio crafts a splendid breakdown of the seven stages of design craft, highlighting the primary KPIs and action items to help you get to the next stage. So without further ado, let's stand up. The seven stages of the design craft and how to get to the next one by Fabricio Teixeira of UX Collective. As you progress in your career as a designer, your focus changes. The types of skills you focus on developing, the types of challenges you have to solve, and how you split your time throughout the day, all of that has to evolve so you can focus on the right things that are expected from your level. When mentoring other designers, I always like to frame a designer's skill set in layers. It's important to make sure designers develop layer after layer in the right order. Exceptions may happen, obviously, but there's a certain progression in how those skills are developed that aligns quite nicely with the seniority levels established by our industry junior, mid-level, senior, and so on. Stage number one, mastering the tools. The designer is learning how to use the tools required to produce design artifacts. For example, design tools, prototyping tools, collaboration tools. They are becoming proficient in a number of them and defining what their tool set is going to look like for the years to come. The key performance indicator or KPI, efficiency. The faster, the better. It's more about speed than it is about the quality of the design. You can't really expect someone with zero experience to be able to produce amazing designs, although exceptions may happen. And what will make your manager happy at this stage? You are able to flex across multiple tools, understand their pros and cons, how to use them efficiently, and understand the right moment to use each of them. Stage number two, learning the good practices. Now that the designer has mastered the tools, they are learning what good design is. They have become so familiar with design patterns and standards used by other products that they know exactly which one to use in each situation. The designer is downloading apps and playing with websites all day, and their brain is being trained to instantly recognize what works and what doesn't from a design and usability perspective. The KPI? Quality. At this point, the designer should be able to make decisions regarding which UI elements to use and how to connect flows in the right way. The designer should then be able to produce solid designs that work. What will make your manager happy? You produce high quality designs. Your manager has to spend less time looking at every single screen you produce. They trust your design decisions and they will end up supporting you with things like selling your work and getting stakeholder buy in. Stage number three forming a point of view. The designer has seen so many permutations of design and has worked on so many tactical solutions themselves that they are now able to start forming their own opinion as a specialist. They understand so well all the elements at stake the user needs, the business, and the technology, that they can now articulate a thorough point of view without a certain design challenge and present that point of view to others. The KPI? Articulation. It's about being able to articulate what the problem is, its requirements, and implications, and to defend a certain solution, highlighting the pros and cons of the design solution presented. What will make your manager happy? You know how to have a great design discussion. You are able to get into the room with clients and stakeholders and have a fruitful conversation about what you think the right solution is. You're not combative. You're smart and rational as you present your point of view to others. Stage number four, telling a story through the design. The designer now understands the importance of making cohesive design decisions. They are able to define a conceptual model for their product, tell a compelling story when presenting that product to their peers, and sustain that concept idea through all stages of design, including detailed design, development, and launch. The KPI? Magic. This is the point of a designer's career when they will create their most brilliant work. Designs that can spark emotion, empathy, and delight while still solving for real business needs. What will make your manager happy? You know how to present your work. You are able to apply a design concept to all levels of your design craft and communicate that concept to others. You require close to zero oversight from a craft perspective, and your manager can start acting more as a coach or mentor than anything else. Stage number five, collaborating at multiple levels. The designer has gotten so good at the craft that they can now focus on the other side of design, 
the implications of the design at the organization level. They are able to lead more junior designers in creating great work. They are learning how to collaborate well with all departments, and they are also learning how to manage up their bosses and stakeholders. They become a reference in the organization when it comes to design thought leadership. The KPI, collaboration. The designer becomes self-sufficient and is able to adapt their collaboration style pretty seamlessly across different disciplines, horizontal, and across different levels, vertical. What will make your manager happy? You are independent. You are able to navigate the organization with very little guidance required. You never bring up a problem without bringing along three solutions. Stage number six: building personal connections. The designer is starting to understand the various political forces within their organization and the right way to navigate them to get ideas executed. They understand the importance of trust in work relationships, and they are starting to form bonds with their team, their stakeholders, or clients, and the community outside the organization. The KPI: trust. The designer becomes a trustworthy figure inside and outside the company. And can quickly build credibility when placed in different contexts. For example, a new business meeting, a new department, or a new project. What will make your manager happy? You are reliable, dependable, steady, and well connected. You make your manager look good, and you can start using your smarts to help them with bigger challenges that go beyond design. You have become a design force, and people start to orbit around you. You attract new talent, new projects, and new business opportunities. And stage seven. Growing the business, the designer has direct impact in the organization's business. The designer is managing bigger teams, leading bigger projects, and most importantly, generating growth in multiple different areas of the organization beyond just the design department. The KPI: growth. In different organizations, that can mean different things: either new business, new projects, team growth, more customers, more awareness or visibility, more money. Ultimately, this is about making the business stronger and bigger. What will make your manager happy? Growing the business, really. When the business grows, departments grow, and there's good chances you and your manager will grow as well. The risk of shaping or becoming a hollow designer. Some designers might hear this and think, "Well, I should try to just skip a few levels altogether then, so I can get a promotion and a higher salary." Sorry to be the one who breaks the news, but it doesn't really work that way. Each of those pieces is intrinsically connected to one another. Each of these layers sets the foundation that will prepare you to develop the next one and the next one. You have to spend a considerable amount of time, years really, focusing on each one of these layers before you move on to the next one. You cannot present a design concept with confidence and credibility if you haven't really spent years of your career operating the tools, designing thousands of different screens, prototyping them, researching best practices, testing your solutions with users, and so on. You might be able to get away in one or two meetings, or even in a job interview. But soon enough, more experienced people will start seeing through you. Good managers and good business people can smell design hollowness from far away, and they won't put their money where they can sense something is not right. The last thing you want, and the last thing our industry needs, is to become a hollow designer, one who is able to fake their way to the top to only get there and realize how mediocre they have become in each one of the aspects of the design craft. You just listened to the post titled "The Seven Stages of the Design Craft and How to Get to the Next One" by Fabrizio Teixeira of UX Collective. If you want to learn more about Fabrizio and read some of his other amazing design articles, just press the link in the show notes or head over to UX Collective at uxdesign.cc. And don't forget to head over to designstandup.com where you can search for episodes by specific categories like UX or career development, read up on our featured authors, and learn more about the show. Well, that's all I have for you today, guys. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, fill up those coffees, turn up those tunes, and let's design a better world.